It's a treatment which could dramatically improve the lives of children with cerebral palsy. Yet, umbilical cord blood treatment is illegal in Australia for most conditions. 40,000 viable samples are in storage. Let's uh, talk to Professor Iona Novak, Head of Research at Cerebral Palsy Alliance Institute. How are you? Good, thank you very much. Thanks for coming into the studio. Now, look, the, the leaps forward, and we'll talk about uh, what's been going on with cerebral palsy in just a tick, but if this can be legalised, this is a game changer. Umbilical cord blood would definitely be a game changer. This is the first stem cell treatment for children with cerebral palsy that's been proven to be effective. But very sadly, Australian families can't access this treatment, whereas American children can. The only two options for Australians at the moment is either to, if they have a child with cerebral palsy and are pregnant with another child, they can store their siblings' cord blood through a very generous program from a company called Cellcare, which is offering this free of charge to Australians, and then they can hope to get into a research trial. Well, their only other option is to fly overseas and pay twenty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 for this treatment overseas. And what we really want to see is this treatment available here in Australia in a safe country and to lower these costs for families. Why is it illegal, Professor? Because, as you mentioned, it is being used very successfully in places like America. There is a petition being signed, which we'll get to shortly, but why are we not having it here in Australia? Yeah, so umbilical cord blood is a proven treatment for blood cancers and the Australian Cord Bank holds these samples, there's 40,000 of them there, for people with blood cancer. What we need is these archaic rules updated to add new indications so that cerebral palsy could also be added as a proven indication. And that's the reason that's holding us back. It seems a no-brainer. It does. Like, why? Why? Who's stopping it? Well, we need to uh, change the laws in this country. Mm. And I think they were written with great intentions for people with blood cancers. It's been known for 50 years this works. However, research moves forward. Stem cells is the frontier of medicine and we now have new data and we just need to update the system so it's possible for families to access this. Cerebral palsy affects more than 17 million people across the world. What are the stats in Australia and can you also describe what cerebral palsy is? Yes, so cerebral palsy is a physical disability. It's a brain injury affecting movement and for most the brain injury occurs during pregnancy for a small proportion at birth or after birth from something like a stroke. Uh, it affects one in 700 Australians. We've recently had a 30% drop in the rate of cerebral palsy in Australia. We have one of the lowest rates in the world and that's credit to extraordinary Australian clinicians and researchers working together. And that tells us if you can prevent a condition which is actually a brain injury, we think we can make progress with repairing the brain. And that's why we're so keen about this issue on stem cells, looking at making a more progressive Australia so that children can access this treatment. So if we can get to that point, if, if people can sign petitions and we can change rules, how will it change the lives of those with cerebral palsy? Yeah, what we see from clinical trials is that umbilical cord blood, when given back, improves a child's movement. So for a child with milder cerebral palsy, we see improvements in their hand function, which means they can play for one child on the monkey bars in the park with other children, a game changer for them. For children with more severe disability, their parents tell us they're more present their communication is better, they have less pain, less gut pain, and they sleep better. And those things are incredibly important to families. Can you tell us about the Cerebral Palsy Alliance Institute? Because reading on your website, there's some really fascinating information, including uh, findings like magnesium sulfate can help premature babies by up to 30%, also melatonin and EPO. Yes, so the way we've achieved this reduction in the rate of cerebral palsy is some preventative measures. Magnesium sulphate, which probably people know better as bath salts, actually if we give it to a mother in, via a drip when she's about to have a premature baby, it actually prevents as much as 30% of cerebral palsy. And we're also looking at a drug called EPO, which is well known in sports and the Tour de France, but we're using it for good. It actually has regenerative properties. It helps the brain start to repair itself because it delivers more oxygen and we're finding that that has a an effect as well and melatonin which you might take for jet lag helps you sleep it also uh, helps protect the brain from an injury and so these factors together are exciting possibilities for cerebral palsy. It's remarkable. As you know I have a, a profoundly affected nephew uh, with cerebral palsy. He turned 15 the other day. He's beautiful. Alexander he's my brother Robert's boy. You have to be close to it to really get a crystallised view of the difficulty yeah. but 
the joy that comes through us normalising their lives, like the riding for the disabled, when he's in water and swimming, or music. It's phenomenal how enriched his life can be. Yeah. I have the luckiest job in the world working with people with cerebral palsy. They bring me much joy and uh, their families are extraordinary. Many people look at them and, and pity the, uh, the situation they're in, but in fact these families find a way to find joy and they love their children extraordinarily and they give us joy as well. Mm. One of your mantras, again on the website, is nothing is impossible, which is uh, just a beautiful saying. Where did that come from? Nothing is Impossible was a statement by the McLeod family who opened our agency some 70 years ago and they were told when their child had cerebral palsy to love her and take her home and die and they didn't accept that future for their child and because of them we have this extraordinary legacy in Australia of uh, an amazing service agency, Cerebral Palsy Alliance and this research that's now changing lives and I think they put it out there, Nothing is Impossible and I firmly believe that every day. People told me this is an unpreventable condition, an incurable condition, you will make no progress but it turns out if you look hard enough we're proving them wrong and I, I, that's why I really want these stem cell treatments available yeah. for children. So get, if you see a petition get around it, sign it, try and let's get these laws changed and the, uh, the, you mentioned the 30% uh, which is fantastic but there's some other great stats, some great improvements done, you and your team uh, and, and others around the country and around the world. Yeah, the most important thing for children with cerebral palsy is to be fully included in Australia and we're really happy that um, interventions that we're offering such as functional training and ch helping children to achieve their goals has them fully included. So there are many randomised trials going on offering new treatments. That it's, it's an explosion of data and opportunities for these children. Where can people go for more information? Yes, we'd love them to sign the petition. They can find it on cerebralpalsy.org.au or they can find it on change.org uh, looking for umbilical cord blood. Yeah, there's some great comments that, um, there, as you mentioned before, Tim, uh, people saying it's a no-brainer. And one person here said, my son's cord was given to a child with cancer and I believe most mothers would be happy, happy if it helped other sick children. So, yeah, there's some really interesting reads on that petition already. Yeah, there is great. So go and check out that information. And look, Cerebral Palsy Alliance, September is, is a fantastic initiative. There is fundraising that goes on uh, throughout the course of the year. Next weekend, the big escape weekend. And it's great to see so many people get around because money means research means impact. Absolutely. All of Australia's stem cell research has been funded by philanthropic gifts from other Australians and that's what's made this first breakthrough possible and so this money from these fundraising events are incredibly important to these children and their families. Oh, and the lives that uh, many with cerebral palsy are living are quite extraordinary. Ben Tudhope, who's a Paralympian, he's over in the United Kingdom, or not, he's in Europe at the moment, He's the number one snowboarder uh, with disability in the world and to see him speak at one of the functions. So, look, try and find out more information on this and help where you possibly can. Iona, always good to catch up. Thanks for coming in. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much.